Right folks, this is part 3 um, in the last video. I had just configured HSRP, I had done some DHCP pulls for each of the VLANs and now what I'm going to do is configure STP so as to synchronise the root bridge of the STP VLAN instance with the HSRP active router. I will also be configuring um, all of these links here to be trunks so as to bring up the interface VLANs which will in turn bring up the HSRP instance. So let's just go and do that then. Eh? The first thing I'm going to do, I'll go into gigabit 01. Just actually to show you what I'm doing here, I'll do show CDP neighbor. And you can see my local gigabit ether connects to D2, which is this one here. So we're going to bring this link up here. So do gigabit ethernet01 on both sides and make them trunk. So conf t and gig01 we'll do switch port trunk ncap.1q switch port mode trunk and switch port no negotiate. Just as a little bit of uh, advice just remember to make sure you change the encapsulation when you're doing a layer 3 switch. I'll show you what I mean. So if I just did gigabit 01, did switch port mode trunk, it will tell me this. You need to remember to do switch port trunk encapsulation dot 1q and then you can do the switch port mode trunk and no negotiate. So that should bring them up. And I'll do and gig 01. It's the same on this switch as well. Switch port trunk ncap.1q switch port mode trunk switch port no negotiate and that's that done. Again same interface oh. and gig 01 switch port oh. trunk encapsulation.1q switch port mode trunk switch port no negotiate Alright, so that's then brought up. Now what I'm going to do is bring up these links here. So I'll just start from this side this time. And we'll do a show CDP neighbour. And you can see these actual HSRPs are coming up now because they're trunking and they can talk to each other. Right, so we have... Fast Ethernet 01, 234, they all go to the access switches denoted by the A, so A5678. So I can just do an int range, call T int range FA0, that's 1 to 4 that can be. Switch port, trunk encapsulation dot 1Q, switch port mode trunk, switch port non, oh, switch port non negotiate. Close that down, and it's the same on this switch as well. And range FA zero one to four switch port trunk encapsulation dot one Q switch port mode trunk switch port mode negotiate. And that's that, and you can see they're just beginning to trunk now. Now these ones are a little bit different. I plug these into different ports only. Just double check that with CDP. And I'll do 0, 1 and 2 in range 0 FA 1 to 2 switch port trunk encapsulation dot 1Q switch port mode trunk switch port no negotiate and I've also got FA 0, 4 and 5 so I'll do them as well in range FA 0, 4 and 5, switch port trunk, encapsulation dot 1Q, switch port mode trunk, switch port non negotiate. Okay, that's D1 done. Let's do D2, show CDP neighbours. And we've also got FA1, 2, 3, so I could do of T and range FA 0, 1, 2, 3, switch port, 
trunk encapsulation dot one key switch port mode oh trunk switch port mode negotiate and I've also got FA05 FA05 port trunk encapsulation dot one key switch port mode trunk switch port mode negotiate right so that's them done now what you'll notice there'll actually be some inconsistent ports down at the access layer so if I go in here and did a show CDP neighbor you'll see that these actually need to be configured to be trunks with no negotiation because the actual negotiates out these are not layer 3 switches I don't need to change the encapsulation so I'll just go straight into the switch port mode trunk switch port mode negotiate and uh, conf t and range fa0 switch port mode trunk switch port mode negotiate and range fa0 1 to 2 switch port mode trunk switch port mode negotiate Enable configure terminal and range FA012 switch port mode trunk switch port mode negotiate. So that should re-establish port consistency between the links. Right, and now what I need to do is actually to align and synchronize the HSRP primary routers with the root bridge of the spanning tree instance. So we're going to have, if you look here, we got a show stand brief. We can see that on this switch for VLAN 3, and VLAN 9, these are the active ones. So I'm going to actually match that up with the spanning trees. To so the spanning tree VLAN 3, 9. I'm going to make this root primary. Oh, take that last comma out. And we'll do VLAN 5 and 14 and make it the secondary for this one. Close that down. Same again here. With a show stand brief. This time you can see it's VLAN 5 is the active and VLAN 14. So again we'll align that with the spanning tree VLAN 5, comma 14, root primary, and the other ones is V3 and 9, and we'll root secondary those. Oh. 3, comma 9 root secondary with a show stand brief and we can see the active is for VLAN 34 and VLAN 42 so the spanning tree VLAN 34 comma 42 root primary and the spanning tree VLAN 37 and 46 oh. 37 46 root secondary and the last one here the show stand brief 
and this one here is VLAN 37 is the active one and VLAN 42 so we'll do configure terminal, do spanning tree, VLAN uh, 37 and 46 make that root primary and we'll do spanning tree, VLAN 34, 42 root secondary so now you can see all the lights are green because the spanning tree has now been optimised so we don't actually have, we're allowing different paths to be utilised so as to be more efficient with the network. So I'm going to cut this video off here and return and go onto the access layer, start configuring some of the port security stuff and whatnot and BPDU guard and port fast. So I'll leave that here and I'll come back in part 4. See you soon.